Hey everyone, welcome to the History of the Frostbite series. Because not a lot of people know about this series, and now that it's somewhat relevant, I figure we should, you know, do a video about it. And when talking about the history of the series, there's nobody more relevant to it than my lovely co-hosts? Co-host is a good way to say co it. Co-hosts of this video. So I'll let you guys introduce yourself, starting from over there. Hi guys, I'm Ori. I'm a Michigan TO and community leader. Uh, one of the original co-hosts of Frostbite. I'm Caleb, originally known as Jax, uh, J-A-X-Z, but went to the aged one. Uh, I'm former Michigan TO, uh, alongside with Ori and uh, Vaseth over here, actually, and uh, one of the original creators of Frostbite as well. Yeah, the original creators of this right here. And Pulse. Pulse, Pulse, Pulse. I forgot my shirt. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Just, you know, stepping up to the plate as usual, Caleb. You got it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Too many other things in my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Caleb no longer is in Michigan. He does something else. So this is a very rare chance for all of us to get together and really tell you about the history of Frostbite. So uh, we don't want to bore you too much, so we'll get right into it. So Frostbite itself, actually, this is, 2018 will be its third year, and not a lot of people know that. So uh, we want to start with Frost. what is known as just Frostbite. I guess officially now known as Frostbite 2016 because we never thought there would be another one. Yeah, no, never. never. <laughs> if you saw the ending of Frostbite, you're like, Ooh. one and done, baby. One People and done. actually got Frostbite at that tournament. Um, and then uh, we move into Frostbite 2017, probably the reason you're watching this right now. And then we'll move right into uh, 2018. We want to give you some behind the scenes of kind of how that worked. So I'll moderate everything and I'll, we'll just get everything going. So first of all... Uh, I guess Ori and Caleb, because at that time in Pulse, I was getting ready to move to Japan to do Base as Voyage. Because yep. that was 2016. I was I left in March. This was in uh, specifically yeah, February. February 13th. It was a one-day event uh, in 2016 in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, in a place called the Neutral Zone. And uh, mm -hmm. that wasn't always the venue. <laughs> no, no, that was, no. That was but uh, before we second, get into all yeah. of that, like Ori, I guess mostly Ori, because I want to talk about the design. But uh, Caleb, feel free to chime in whenever. Um, so what's the history of Frostbite? Where's the name come from? Where'd the logo come from? All right, so Frostbite was initially part of what was known as the Midwest Circuit. It was a group effort started by E2C from Chicago, um, and they wanted to create a circuit kind of uh, a, like akin to like what used to happen back in the Brawl days, right? but make it for Smash 4 and get everybody from the Midwest to travel. Mm -hmm. So Michigan Stop was slated for February. And when Caleb and I were talking about, all right, well, we got to come up with a stop, we're just like, frostbite, because it's the middle of winter. No other... That's it? That's yeah, that, that was why that we is, came up yeah. with frostbite. <laughs> like, wait, you, you guys at least thought, like, oh, it's a battle, and it has bite in it, and it's winter, so nope. frostbite? It was it was literally just nobody is going to want to be in Michigan in the middle of winter during exactly. February. Do you know that's actually... I, I noticed a lot of, like, West Coast people, I think it was Strides, I'm not 100% sure, but he was like, why would you name your tournament off of something like so Yeah, I, yeah I think it was. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Like, so... I, I, it's, it's good to know that that's actually the origin of it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. very serious here. Yeah, and so where'd we, the bear come from? Um, to me, I guess one of the big, powerful symbols of like winter is like a polar bear or just some type of fierce bear. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna make frostbite. Bear. Has nothing to do with your alma mater. No, at all. No, because that's where I thought it came from. I thought because no. he went to uh, Oakland, University. Oakland University in Michigan. And they're the Grizzlies or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, Golden Grizzlies, yeah. So, like, I literally thought he stole the logo and had to check that logo and be like, oh, no, it's different. And I was like, Ori, who drew it? And you were like, I did. I'm a graphics designer. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So we chose the Frostbite Bear because it symbolized, like, a fierce Michigan winter. Yeah. And I think when you see a mascot behind the series, it gains more traction. Fair from enough. a design standpoint. Fair enough. Everybody lost their minds over this stupid Yeah, bear. everybody <laughs> loved Frostbite Bear. It was The tournament crazy. was terrible, but people liked the bear. So, uh, as we said, it was originally part of the Midwest Circuit, which was both Melee and Smash 4 run out of Chicago, primarily by Smash 4 people. Yeah. But right. this event actually did have Melee. So when everyone's like, when's Frostbite going to have Melee? I always answer, two years ago. Yeah, so. ne never again will we do CRT events. Sorry, guys. That The only reason why we don't is because at YomaCon, I think that year, a CRT tube exploded in my face. 
So, like, that would be why that's not happening again. We did have Melee. It was on the Melee It On Me rankings for this year. Yeah, it was incredibly stacked. We had KJH, Hugs, Duck, Prince of Boo, Dreffen, Anther, and more uh, yeah. entering the tournament with Young Jungle Guy bringing in a sweet ninth place. Yeah, Jungle so, Guy still does play that game, guys. Yeah, well, I think the Melee people know, but maybe not Smash 4. Um... And uh, we had 79 people, and uh, it was pretty good. And then uh, for Wii U, we had 176, nearly the amount of current <laughs> Frostbite 2018 registrations. Yeah, yeah, 20 so PSI. thank you very much for that. But um, the first place was? Ally. Ally. Second place was? Zenodo. Third place was? And the story of the tournament was? Ned. Uh, he ended up taking, that was back when he used to main Zero Suit Samus. Right. Ended up taking the set off of Zenodo and Winners side and it upset everybody i mean it blew yeah. everybody's mind until zanoto got the run back in losers finals right that was like the breakout tournament, tournament for back. ned too so yeah. oh absolutely for your smash for history especially your midwest history frostbite 2016 actually kind of an important match or a tournament for smash 4 because now we know ned is pgr and like he's turned into this huge player and like definitely second best in the midwest so like this was the time where we really got to see his zero suit samus Coming to play, then the nerf, then the cloud. Now he's on the PGR. Yeah. So that was the big story. But uh, just to go through the top eight in fourth place, we had Kasev, uh, very nearly PGR uh, former Foxman. I think he's retired now for the most part. Yeah. Um, then we had uh, JT fifty five sixty five Sonic uh, in fifth place. We had Fatality, one of the uh, players we flew out for it because each yep. stop on the circuit flew out different players. So Fatality was there, and DK Will was there in seventh place along with Katakiri. So, um, it was a pretty big tournament at the time. 176 was, like, actually kind of a big deal back in the day. Yeah, especially, especially yeah. yeah, in Michigan especially. And for the uh, Midwest Circuit, I think it was stop number two after Dismantle 2. I think, or Dismantle, yeah, one of Dismantle, those. Yeah. You know, it was Dismantle 2, and I think we were only, like, 20 entrants shy of that. So, it was pretty, it was really good to see it, especially because it was the dead of winter, and there was just so much snow on the ground. Like, people are actually traveling for this event. So, seeing 176... And it probably blizzarded earlier that week. It was pretty good. Plus, well, now that now that we're done... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, plus, outside of uh, Ally for this one, we really didn't have as many of the big-name players at the time yeah. show up to this, whereas Dismantle had, I believe, Nairo and DeBuzz as well. Yeah, yeah. it had a lot of top talent. Every, yeah, but I think part of the Midwest circuit was to make sure that everybody had different people, you know? Mm -hmm. Correct. So, now that we're done kissing Frostbite 2016's ass, let's just talk about the fact that it was actually ass. It, it was <laughs> oh. a train wreck. So, <laughs> it, it was yeah. a happy accident for the... Mind you, as I said, I was going to Japan, right? So, I was not really at all about this. I was definitely in a very hands-off from Michigan. I'm moving to Japan. See you guys later, Pulse. Good luck. With this event, and you guys seemed to have it handled, and it was all good, and I was going to leave Pulse, and then Caleb calls me. What, what, what does Caleb say? Actually, oh, gosh. Actually, uh, find out after this next message. So, Caleb calls me up. When I told you I had nothing to do with this tournament, whatever, you called me up because what happened? What would you cause you to call me? Well, we had secured a nice hotel venue, and due to a complication on their side, all of a sudden, what was it, probably two, three weeks before the tournament? No, it was it was the week of. It was like 10 days or something <laughs> It like was that. crazy, like really, yeah, really right was... before the tournament, right before, we. I mean, we couldn't get any money back for anything. Uh, the venue had to cancel on us. Because they double booked. Correct. And the, the person for the weekend or the group for the weekend was like a longtime patron of the hotel who constantly sells out tons of rooms. So they were like, see ya. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And they we took were, up we all the space that we could have possibly used. So I immediately went into action, grabbed Dogma, the old school Pulse guy. Oh. One, yeah, uh, the one that I brought in because it was very much Caleb and Ori when Pulse started. And then Dogma and I came in. Uh, because we ran the Gamers Gauntlet series in Michigan, so instead of competing, we ended up trying to fuse, and that failed spectacularly. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so Dogma and I were like, all right, you found the venue, right? You found... Uh, no, actually, it was uh, E2C's Joe Barrels, who actually found it. Hilariously enough, from out of state, 
He found it faster than any of the in-state guys. So, and then you visited it. Yes. And you were like, all right, we found a replacement. It was like within 48 hours or something, right? It was yeah, really it was, yeah, it was yeah. really, really fast. So, we were still in Ann Arbor, so the marketing still worked. But we needed a little bit of something extra. So, Dogma and I went there. I brought my iPhone and an iPhone microphone. And I just made these stupid videos where I was interviewing people. Uh, like, Juggle Guy came to visit. I was going to say, I believe yeah. Juggle Guy. And, like, I was like, Juggle Guy, what do you think about this tournament? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and then, like, the, the person in the neutral zone, I was, like, interviewing them. And I was like, hey, how do you feel about this? And there was just like, how do you feel about neutral starts? Because this is the neutral zone. And, like, she didn't get it. But, like, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then... Uh, I was like, okay, so to make up for this, we have to do X, Y, and Z. And that, that's actually where the low tier hero award came from. Yeah. <laughs> because we were panicking and people were freaking out and like calling like the tournament a huge failure. So I was like, okay, we need to do this, this, and this. And one of those things was actually the low tier hero award, which if you don't know where that came from, it came from a Magic the Gathering tournament called uh, Eternal Weekend, where uh, if you play Magic, it, the oldest form of Magic is called Vintage. And if you don't use any of the most powerful cards, they give you a pop bonus for the deck that uses that. So I just localized that to Smash. And I was like, hey, if you use low tiers for the whole tournament and you're the highest placing one, you get a pop bonus. Yeah. And that's where that came from. And Naoto, uh, who still plays, uh, I've definitely seen that name around very recently. Yeah. Uh, Little Mac ended up taking the low tier hero award. I don't remember what place, but it was, it was top 16, I think. I believe it was 17. It, 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 was, it was definitely... Decently high, higher than Frostbite twenty seventeen. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Naoto did tie for seventeenth uh, out of Chicago. Yeah. As Little Mac, and he was our low tier hero award. Right, right. So that's actually where that came from, and now it's a huge critical part of our marketing. And like, yeah, what is. we do, like Frostbite's where like low tier slash underrepresented characters come to shine, and that's like basically been our marketing. Like that's why when I was picking. Japanese players for 2017. I started with T and I started with Shoe Tone because nobody played those characters. Yeah. And like, that's what we thought Frostbite was about. But before we get to there, basically the whole tournament was a mess because the venue was fine, but it didn't have internet. Yeah, it did have internet, just very, very weak internet. That really we ended did up not streaming off a well. phone, two phones. One of them didn't even work. So. Melee stream got recorded. I don't know if those matches ever made it anywhere, but like <laughs> they got recorded, not a live update because they just gave up on the phone mid tournament. And then we got one phone to work it, and they live streamed everything. It was Gushi, so it was Smash Four actually got streamed. So like that footage is out there, probably on Gushi Gaming. Go check them out on YouTube. But uh, and I know that footage is out there actually because we used that footage for the opening Frostbite 2017 yeah. trailer, right? Thank you, Lord Stern. So, yes, <laughs> oh um, my God. But, um, yeah, so that was Frostbite 2017, one of the many bumpy stops. 2016. 2016. 2017 was good. <laughs> <laughs> for, for one of the many bumpy stops in the road for uh, the Midwest uh, Smash 4 slash Melee circuit. So, I go to Japan, right? I, I go to Never Never Land. I write Base S Voyage. I'm all about coming in here and, like, trying to learn about the Japanese Smash 4 scene. And I don't remember what it was, probably July or August, right? I, like, messaged you guys, and I'm like, hey, I'm coming back. Yeah, well, it was around August, September that you, we knew you were coming back. Well, no, you, I came back August 29th, so it had to have been... It was it was July. It, it had to oh. be somewhere in there. It was either June or July, something like that. But prior to you even telling us we were coming back, we had several people approach us uh, throughout the Midwest, really, and say, hey, when is, you know, is there going to be another frostbite? When are you guys going to be another frostbite bear again? And our answer always up to that point was, hopefully never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was. Yeah. People, people just wanted the damn bear back. Right, and that was like, the They didn't care about the tournament, they just wanted the bear. <laughs> well, I, I, like, even preceding that, when I finally found out that I was coming home, I started talking to you guys, and I was like, hey, I got this idea. I don't know if you remember this idea, but I was talking to the Japanese uh, tournament organizers, and we were thinking about doing a quarterly circuit. With Pulse, mm -hmm. Umebura, and Smabato. Do you remember this? Yeah. So actually, it was supposed to be a quarterly tournament where two events were in Japan and two events were in the U.S. And they were supposed to be based on the seasons. Do you remember this? 
roughly. Uh, roughly. Right. Because the Frostbite yeah. was supposed to be the winter one because everyone wanted the bear back, so we thought, well, it already exists, why not? Yeah. And then Umebura, what ended up becoming Umebura Japan Major, um, was the, the spring one. Mm-hmm. Then there was going to be a summer one in Michigan, and then there was going to be, in November, there was going to be a fall-themed one in Osaka. And that was the original idea for this. It's like, Frostbite will be the first stop, and then at Frostbite 2017, we were going to announce this whole beautiful circuit thing based on the seasons, because that's how Jap- Japan works, and it was going to be really cool, and whoo, that <laughs> didn't even happen. No, <laughs> no. I think, oh god, because going into Frostbite 2017, we knew it was going to be the uh, coup de grace for Pulse Gaming. Uh, but we didn't know it at the time when we were making it. No, at, when we, we when it was in development... We knew it probably, I think... Right after Katar. Yeah, so yeah, November. So, so November. it was like right around Thanksgiving of 2016, we knew that Pulse was going to was gonna die and like Frostbite was going to be it. So uh, luckily everything still worked out in a way. Obviously we didn't have another super huge Michigan tournament. I guess Showdown could have been that, you know? Yeah. But like, it, it was like, it was a nice pipe dream. It was cool. But oh, was. literally that tournament does not exist. If I don't message T and Shootone saying, I will fly you out to Michigan, will you come? And they said yes. Then they had to get their passports. It was a big deal. It was the first time they ever left Japan. Yeah. And at the time, nobody played Olimar. Nobody played T. T was still, a uh, Link was still considered a low tier, so he would have mm-hmm. qualified for the low tier hero award. Ironically enough, didn't get it. Thanks to Komoda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Komoda and there was somebody else, Ozone. I believe they, they yeah, tied. Ozone, they they tied. tied it. Right, right, right. But it, it, like, it's funny. Komoda got the low tier hero award at 2017 and directly was involved with why T didn't get it, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we go into Frostbite 2017 with this trailer at Big House. It was such a stressful time. Like, I was home on August 29th, and we worked nonstop on Big House 6, because that was a very, very, very tough tournament for us. Yeah. Uh, logistically and everything. And meanwhile, while planning in complete secrecy this Frostbite 2017, which, who knew that was going to happen or whatever. And that was a different time in Smash history. You know, 2016 was completely different, and people were like, oh my god, Japanese players! That still meant something. And, like, we had people, like, Myron signed up, Within the first 30 seconds yeah, or something. he, he oh, signed yeah. up during the trailer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> during the trailer, he had, he had registered. Which was great, because Myron ended up, you know, doing a huge, huge upset at oh, uh, Frostbite 2017 as well. And find a moment about that later. So, yeah, we knew that it was going to be a huge theme between us and japan between all the seasons and then the introduction of shuto and t and all that we knew from the beginning that we were going to have uh japan and the us that was going to be one of the central themes for it but uh we didn't know that it was going to be a crew battle when we first started yeah no. definitely that was kind of a unexpected uh thing that arose that sort of just showed up out of nowhere because when we announced that these two players that had done very well in japan uh, were coming, not only was the U.S. like a buzz, but Japan specifically was super a buzz. They were like, this is our tournament in the U.S. and stuff. And at the time, like, we just saw what happened with Big House, where Japan just won yet another crew battle. And I don't remember who it was, but um, one of the Japanese players, probably Abadango, because this sounds like something he would say, he was like, oh, well, we only ever win because Japan... Uh, is one region, whereas all the best players in the U.S. are spread out by region. So, of course, we're always going to win. And I told Anti, I think, at Big House 6, and he tweeted that, and that's where the crew battle came from, basically. Like, that was the marketing for it. It was just like, Japan says they always win because U.S. is split up, so why don't we just do that? And then, through to a bunch of technicalities, we had to eventually change it to U- from USA to North America because they were like, well, ally! Like, for us in Michigan, allies... Yeah. Like, he lives he here. Lives here. <laughs> but, you know, whatever, whatever. So we had North America versus Japan crew battle, which ended up being the, the huge marketing engine, which lets us not bring out two players, but ten. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of people really like that. It's one of Unrivaled Tournament's, like, biggest viewed videos. And it basically set the tone for the rest because of Sue's frozen and ice thing. So yeah. credits to Sage, credits to Sue, 
like the meme economy was high because oh, of absolutely. that. It was. So it was good. Um, we tried to fund it with a compendium, you know, <coughs> and um, we didn't know what we were doing. No, no we not at yet. all. We've so never compendiums were new for us. Um, we thought we wanted to do this, that, or another thing. Now, Smash GG tells us that it was a very successful shop, um, but not as successful as we would have liked. And um, because of the flights, um, the tournament actually went into a loss. I mean, not a CEO Dreamlander Shine level loss, but it, it was still a big hit for us. It, it was a very big hit, uh, especially yeah. due to personal circumstances for both yeah. Tori and I at the time. I was unemployed at the time. You guys just recently became unemployed at yes. that time. So yeah. it was like just a very dark... This is the darkest timeline right there. It was. <laughs> but, um, you know, it worked out. Um, everything's fine. But uh, the uh, the crew battle was a huge, huge part of it. But more than that, it gave us the excuse to bring out more than just those. We had Somme, a Greninja. Mm -hmm. um, we had Taranito did some stuff. He was like one of their Nesses. Now you might have seen him at Big House 7 was Gax. Uh, that that yeah. Ness is doing work. So Japan's still proving that they have all of these players there but uh just to go down the list ken uh at that time was very rare to come to the u.s yeah and has recently uh since that time because it was como was number one now ken has become number one and he's just won all these tournaments we had abadang which everybody knew kirihara was still pretty well underrepresented in the meta but like people had gone to japan especially for umebura's big tournaments they knew that kirihara was like really good so like that was the first time to see him then you had your crowd favorites like Kamehameha, Renai, and Como also showing up to round out the crew battle. Mm -hmm. So, and how could we forget one of the very last inclusions on the team? I think it was actually the last inclusion on the team, Sue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he right. was because <laughs> if you guys don't love D Disciple, you should follow him because I, he was the one since the very beginning. He's like, what about Sue? We need Sue. I love Sue. I think he's a Lucario man. I'm not 100 percent sure. Sorry, he is, Disciple. He is definitely. Yeah, and he's just like, we gotta have Sue out here, man. We gotta have Sue. And then I brought it up to the Japan group, and they were like, yeah, in a crew battle, Lucario seems good. Let's bring out Sue. Yeah. <laughs> he was literally the last person chosen for the tournament, and holy god, just basically made the tournament what it was. Everybody knows you can watch endless highlight videos. Sue got second, nearly first. That read. Like that that dash up smash roll read like he sh oh that it, that was the tournament ender but God zero's plot armor yeah <laughs> yeah it was crazy so that tournament was really good there's a lot of great highlight videos out there so you can find it all for yourself but frostbite 2017 ended uh, the hype died pulse died later became yep. flatline gaming <laughs> flatline um and then. Right around where I'm going. So this is new for Caleb, because Caleb's been working, he got a new job. So Caleb has no idea about Frostbite 2018 going into it. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I do want to say one quick thing oh, sure, sure, uh, sure. about Frostbite 2017 before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, the North American crew battle, we did change it to North America. But according to Vaseth over here, uh, Mexico is not part of North America. <laughs> Shut and up! So, and so MKLeo was not Why? allowed on the team. Why? No, the real story is the team was full prior to us knowing that MKLeo was going to attend the tournament. We had thought he originally was going to be attending a Mexican tournament the same weekend and was going to be unable then, to go. Yeah, but he dropped and came in. He was like, last minute, kind of still getting the crew battle. Sorry, but that's I, true. I, I didn't have to there was that. a tweet. <laughs> Where some I like changed it to North America so that way Canada would be in it. And somebody was like, well, what about if it's North America? Why not MK Leon? It was just like, he's in Mexico. Isn't that Latin America? And he <laughs> just roasted me with the Pulse Twitter. It was, it was it amazing. Was... <laughs> Simple geography. I think, and, and now I, I, now I manage Twitter Leo. roasted you for a little bit. Yeah, and now I manage Leo, so... Yeah, I don't Comes live that circle. down. I thought I was going to live it down, but whatever. If this so. if this part gets cut, I'm going to be very mad. It won't. It won't. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Frostbite 2018, the, the behind the scenes of what we can talk about because the tournament is still very live right now. Uh, 161 is as of right this second. Yeah, what the registries of this, are as of this video in less than a week. So this is story oh, what, time. 164 for actually. 164. Hey, we're <laughs> we almost to Frostbite 2016 numbers in one week. Let's go. But um, so anyway. 176, let's get there. Um, so, Caleb, this is what happened. I'm going to Kobo with Robin, uh, Juggle Guy, okay. uh, to visit for Big House 7. So it was me, Gamero, and Robin. And we were there, we're visiting the venue, we're talking about early things for Big House 7, right? And he says something to the effect of, you know what's going to happen with Frostbite? You know, that brand seems very strong. I, Juggle Guy doesn't talk like this. but um, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, 
And I was just like, well, Pulse is dead. We don't really have anything to do it. I don't think it's going to happen. Like, I just don't think. He's like, I don't know, man. I think you should look into it. You know enough people. You know, go, go talk to some people. In literally 24 hours, we had the tournament. Yeah. After that. And this is what, July? It was somewhere in June, July-ish, yeah. Yeah, because. Like, it was... and we were already making moves as early as July because I remember talking to some top players about potential things that may or may not happen at EVO. So, like, at, by EVO, we definitely had the group. We definitely had the idea that was going on at that time. So, it was trying to be, like, the biggest world's best kept secret for a long time. So, it, it did a good job for, of for uh, being part. hidden under wraps. Yeah. But, personally, I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. Because that sort of puts you into a box. And I don't like copying people. So, I thought, you know... Last year we did Shu Tone and T. Who can we bring out this year? And that's why you have people like Akai Riot and Yasai Kakiyage as the featured artists. Once again, stolen from Magic the Gathering, um, because they have artists of honor and stuff where you can go to like the GPs to talk to them. And I was like, why don't we bring that? Yeah. Because Smash Four doesn't have well known artists. I mean, it's not like they're just Smash Four or anything, but like they've done a lot for the community. If you don't know who Akai Riot is, um, <clears throat> he does a lot of things. But most notably, he did the Debuzz comic. Yeah. For Frostbite, where DeBuzz was talking to the plushie while he was playing Ken. Uh, so he did that comic. Uh, so I definitely contacted him. And Yasai has done Abadango's t-shirt, Zero's t-shirt. I've worked with her a lot, back and forth, translating these deals. Uh, she also does the uh, 2GG charms. So if you like those FE Saga charms, like that's her. That's what she does. So we thought we'd bring them out. And like that's going to be the thing. Like We're going to have a set count live. We're going to show the Evo Japan documentary, we're going to have these two guests of honor who have never been to a tournament before, and now the experience is now the forefront as opposed to these players! Now it's the experience. And that's kind yeah. of like where we're at right now in the marketing. There's there's a lot more to come, I could tell you. But that's where we're at. So it's going to be cool. Caleb, for the announcement, dressed up as a Frostbite bear. Uh, but we want to show Smash 4. This is what Frostbite's about. Damage, DMG did the trailer, Smash 4 group. Uh, Yasai has worked with uh, Smash 4. Akai has worked with Smash 4. We want to try to make sure that this is one of the best Smash 4 uh, tournament experiences if you love the game. So, please, hashtag come to Frostbite. 